So the theme is going to be that they're kind of marching through some disused farmland. Hello and welcome to part 9 of painting Kings of War Shadows in the North two player starter set. In this week's video we're going to be multi-basing the Night Stalkers. <laughs> So we're going to try and make these bases as versatile as possible by starting with troop sizes that can be combined into a regiment and then you know maybe you can stick them the two regiments together to make a horde although that would be using the uh, scarecrows on one regiment and the spectres on another regiment but you know got to make as much use as we can out of the starter set. We're going to start with splitting some matches um, you know some matchsticks here and they're going to be used to represent planks of wood and they're roughly the right sort of scale for these 32 millimeter models. Just want to show you here how I made a mistake with my Northern Alliance set. So this was going to be two troops, but you can see I'm pointing there at the stones, some bits of slate, and I foolishly glued them right over in the middle of the join. And you, you can't cut through those either with like a bone saw or, or anything really. So with my Night Stalkers here, I'm being a bit more careful and making sure that anything that overlaps the joins between the troop bases can definitely be cut. So quick tip there don't stick any stones across the joins if you're planning to uh, do the multi-basing like this so I've just sort of blue tapped them to the desk in front of me so that they stay together and I can mold the, the groundwork across the four troop bases just using some old milliput that I've got here so the theme is going to be that they're kind of marching through some disused farmland and the, um, the long thin bits of milliput that I put down there are going to be where some fences have you know, been put up in the past by some farmers or something and they're now kind of disused but they're following uh, like a field pattern or you know the edge of a field that kind of thing and then the other blobs of milliput are just to provide some uh, you know some interest some undulations in the ground this is kind of like the the base layer if you like all this is going to get covered up with sand and grit and other bits and bobs later. So now the milliput's dried I'm just going to use a scalpel to carefully cut between the sections because although I want it to look like one cohesive base because you know that's the whole point of multi-basing you know they do need to be um, they do need to be um, separate to be used as troops as well. Now I said the milliput was dry obviously it's not dry um, it's uh, still quite uh, still quite sticky so just using some broken pieces of matchstick to create the fence posts and then those cut pieces that I did earlier to create the uh, planks of wood just basically making a uh, like a, a disused fence here you know trying to have a few bits that are falling off um, and a few bits that are still stuck together Stick some pieces in the ground like this here. Use the milliput to go around it and make it look like it's half buried. I think that'll look good. You know, that'll look good when we uh, finish up. I was using a, um, a fairly strong PVA to help glue the wooden pieces into the milliput, and I'm using that uh, strong PVA now. It's just like a hobby glue, basically. Got some small pieces of stone here, nothing uh, spectacular. Again, just providing some uh, additional height on the base. And you can see me sort of scooping up the glue that's gone between the, the two troop bases there. I don't want to stick the bases together fully. You know, they're meant to be able to be moved together to be either troop or regiment bases. I realised that um, all the bits of fence I had were the same height. So I've taken out a piece or two and I'm going to put some full size matchsticks in. Uh, I kind of realized that the fences would be up to around about the waist of the 32 mil models because you know if a farmer would put them in you know they wouldn't be you know just down at his uh, knee height. You can see I've drawn where the feet are going to go on these uh, butchers. Um, I found that really useful actually for the bases where there's only um, a small amount of models um, but their arms are sort of like hanging out to the sides. It helps you sort of visualize uh, exactly where they're going to go. So when it comes to sculpting uh, the uh, the fence pieces on here, uh, they can be in the right place. If you just put the fence in and made that look good, like a little 
um, you know, diorama bait and then try to glue the models on, you might find that they don't fit on properly. Obviously, as part of the starter set, we've only got one um, one troop of these uh, monstrous infantry, so uh, they're all going to go on the same base here. Same thing, just use some stones to add some height. So watered down a bit of uh, the PVA glue here, probably about one to one. Starting with um, starting with some like more coarse sand so you can see i've got a, a pot there at the side it's, it's basically some like mixed grade so some some um some bigger bits of sand and some smaller bits of sand and i just give it a shake so that the smaller bits go to the bottom and i can grab the bigger bits and they're going to go or, you know as you can see they've gone around the um the larger stones on the base now i've watered down the pva a little bit more probably about one and a half parts water to one part glue now you don't need to copy that exactly because your pva might already be thinner than the stuff i've got but it basically you don't want it super thick now i'm just sprinkling the sand all over the base as you can see it's um you know there's a lot of different um gr you know grit sizes in there which will make it interesting it won't look you know we just don't want it to look too uniform um, once it had dried there was a few gaps that didn't really take the sand very well so just put a bit more pva on and sprinkle some more grit over the top. So now we're going to seal all that in. So it has dried and we're going to seal it in with a um, uh, even more diluted mix of PVA. So this is now probably about three or four parts water to one part PVA and we're just going to slosh it over the top and let it dry. Uh, one word, word of warning here, um, if you're going to display the models you know, eventually in a display case with some bright lights, they're going to get very hot. It's possible that that PVA will shrink even further under really hot lights and start sort of like warping and well, like I say, shrinking and pulling away. So just be aware of that. And you can see here that I needed to trim the uh, edge of the bases to make them fit together as, uh, as, as one piece. So we're going to move on to the painting now, starting with some Vallejo uh, earth colour. So I've primed these in black and we're going to start dry brushing uh, Vallejo game colour earth. So you know usual thing with dry brushing the brush is either dry or just very 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 slightly damp. I prefer it to be slightly damp. Some Karak stone, you know, same thing, just dry brushing all over the top, especially on the rock areas. The Karak stone makes the uh, rocks look pretty cool. Also hitting the um, uh, the fence pieces with this, but just being careful not to dry brush them too vigorously so that they get damaged. Started adding a bit of Yushabti bone there and it was too yellow, so going straight in with the uh, Deneb stone. You could also use Rakar flesh or something similar. Basically, it's a bit, a bit cooler. Um, than the, the ivory of the, um, uh, you know, like a bone colour, basically. So there's already some Deneb stone on the brush. I'm just mixing in some white. You know, I don't need to do it separately. You can just mix it in on the brush that's already got the Deneb stone and just do another, another highlight dry brush uh, with a much whiter colour. Now, if you're wanting like a real sort of wasteland look, you could kind of leave it like this. Um, without adding too much, you know, extra bits and bobs on top of it. I think it gives a good, uh, a good contrast. You know, you've got some dark colors, some lighter colors, you know, it looks pretty good, but I'm going to use some contrast paints to basically uh, put a wash all over the top. It'll add some definition to the base, mainly black Templar on the stone areas. And then we're going to use a mixture of the Wildwood, uh, the Creed camo, and some Agaros dunes. I've just dolloped loads of it on my uh, on that sort of old lid there, I'm putting it on straight, and just mainly grabbing the wild wood, and then then putting some of the green here, some of the yellow there. You know, just making it, you know, making it quite varied. You know, another way of doing it would be to cover the whole lot in wild wood, and then put in some of the green here, there, and everywhere. 
I particularly like adding the green around the stones and the bottom of the fence because we're going to add some tufts and things like that afterwards and you know it makes me think that maybe the uh the, the built-up areas on the base like around the fence uh you know they would um be a little bit greener maybe with some moss and lichen so now it's dried we're just going to go back in not you know not gonna spend ages really dry brushing it up in layers we're just going straight back in with the deneb stone dry brush over the uh the stone areas and then um you know do that you know, use a deneb stone as well over some of the, the higher areas. <laughs> There's Andy making an appearance. Getting cat hairs and everything. So yeah, I'm, with this dry brush, I'm really just trying to catch the, um, catch the sort of like higher areas and some of the larger stones and some, including some of the larger like, you know, you know, sand bits that were in my sand pot and also the, uh, the fence pieces. It's meant to pro provide some contrast to the models that are quite bright and colourful. I want this to be, you know, a mixture of like dark and light base, but not particularly colourful. So there you can see like the, the blues and the purples on the models are quite colourful compared to the base. So they've got some little nubbies of uh, metal on their feet where I pinned them when I was um, painting the models. So I've left those on maybe a couple of millimetres and you can push that down into the sand and the PVA and the milliput to help hold them in place. So you know that the downside of super glue is if you drop these they will break off. That's also a positive in as much as if they were plastic glued on and you drop them you know they could potentially kind of like really bend you know drastically out of place. Uh, I noticed with this base here that I built up, I made that mistake of um, the model basically not fitting on properly, so I had to cut a bit of it out, quickly paint it over with some wildwood, and then the base of the model fits on uh, a lot better now. Okay, so yeah, I quickly looked here at what the uh, the, uh, the uh, preferred model count was, so I need eight for a troop and 15 for a regiment, so I decided I'm gonna go with making sure I got eight on each of the troop bases. It's actually harder than it looks to get, oh, I can't imagine really trying to get 10 of these on. It's quite hard to get eight on. So you can see what I'm doing here is um, starting with some of the guys that are um, kind of take up more real estate. So like this dude here, he's he's got his legs right out to the side. He takes up a lot of space. Actually, they all take up quite a lot of space to be honest. No rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this other than taking my time and working out which models can I fit in in you know a good position so that they're not looking regimented so i want them sort of like bunched up in one area and then maybe a bit more spread out in another area and with these guys with their hands and tentacles sticking all over the place you can see here that i'm trying to work out how can i put them on so that their arms overlap like that there um you know they're not stood right next to each other like you know like old war you know like old warhammer models the warriors of chaos they all sort of like stood right next to each other their arms weren't getting in each other's way their weapons weren't getting in each other's way they were very sort of static looking but i want these guys to look like they're roaming through these old fields um just a quick interlude here i realized that i'd uh, forgot to add the magnets to the bottom of some of these bases i want to add i want to put these in uh, a magnetized tray box when they're done so just a quick case of um you know, drilling into the bottom, bit of super glue, and then recess one of these magnets or a couple of these magnets in. You know, although not essential depending on how you're going to store them, I did make sure that the polarity was facing in the correct direction for all the magnets, just in case I decide to put them on like a magnetic sheet at some point. So yeah, here's how the spectres look, and you can see how, as a whole unit, they kind of look like they're rambling through the field, they're not all regimented. You know, I think they look pretty good. They're sort of clambering over these old bits of fence. And here's the scarecrows, same kind of thing. I've already added the tufts and the bits of grass to the base as well. Not grass, uh, flowers. And yeah, here's what the uh, the butchers look like. Oh yeah, and the uh, and the horror there. He looks pretty sweet. Actually, I was quite pleased with how um, how the magical elements of his 
base, well not his base, the magical elements of the model, the, well, I don't know what they are, uh, the things that he's floating on, they, they kind of work well by sticking the grass all around it. It looks like he's sort of coming up from the ground and he's in the middle of that sort of, like, you know, flowery grassy field. I'm just going to sort of show the different things that I use, so some Highland Tufts here. Interestingly, I was just pointing out there that the new Highland Tufts, um, they're much more uniform, they're not so scraggly as the old ones, and I prefer the old ones, they look more um, wasteland, more wasteland-like. Got some army painter, sort of like yellow flowers, and then some just generic mixed flowers from eBay. Now some of these are quite um, sticky underneath, and some of them um, aren't quite as sticky, so I, I add super glue to the bottom of everything that I put on these bases, or that, you know, will eventually come off. And I'm working on the basis that most of the flowers would be uh, around some of the uh, you know some of the rocks the fallen fence those are areas where there'd be more water left on the ground or where water would pool i'm also using these tufts to kind of hide a little bit where some of the feet have been super glued onto the base and maybe they haven't quite sort of settled on very well you know i really enjoy this part of the basing because it's you know it's the last bit and i think it you know it sort of finishes it off finishes it off and makes it look good I wanted to make sure of flowers, sort of like yellows and the whites, um, and you know, within those sort of white flowers, they're kind of, I say white, they're more sort of like a mixture of white and light blue. Um, I felt it would be a good contrast to the darkness of the, of the, the sand and the gravel on the base. Um, but sort of fit in with the blue and the purpley theme of the models. So I don't know, you can let me know what you think about that. I don't think it clashes. Um, I, I think it, I think it complements it, you know, pretty well. Those, you know, those colours on the base. Oh yeah, here's just a final few, you know, pictures to sort of show what the models look like, you know, fully based up. I'm pretty happy with them. If you thought this was a useful video, leave me a comment or a like or, you know, whatever really. Um, let me know what you th you know. Let me know what you thought. Not the most sort of complex basing, um, but enough to be interesting rather than just sand and just a bit of static grass. But yeah, you know, let me know what you think. Um, anything you do differently in terms of the choice of color scheme from the models to the base, or any particular comments on this project actually getting finished? You know, I'm pleased with myself for finishing these guys. Um, you know, I'd love to hear what you think.